Hello guys, it's Dan here from Dan's Tech, and in today's video guys, I'm pretty excited to be bringing you a review of the Noctua NHD15. It's a very, 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 very expensive, probably the most expensive air cooler that you can actually buy for a computer. Uh, you know, it does have six copper heat pipes, a massive dual, uh, you know, dual um, heat sink, and you know, and just, yeah, it's just oh, very, very high end. It does come with two massive 140 millimeter fans, which are actually uh, 140 by 150 millimeters. They're not exactly, you know, the conventional square, but there's a reason for that. So yeah, without further ado, we're gonna get in uh, to having a look what you get in the box, go over the installation and the performance, and uh, yeah, just for you guys that are a little bit observant, I've actually installed this on my computer, and it actually matches now the fan that, you know, I do have on that strange little arm that you guys have mentioned. Uh, there we are, but yeah. I'm just gonna say I am very very impressed with it. It is an expensive cooler, but um, it it really does perform very very well, and uh, you know, the amount of noise it makes when performing really really well is quite unbelievable. But now let's kind of get into the video, and um, yeah, let's unbox the Noctua NHD15. To get started, as always, inside the box on top you find three boxes, one containing all the needed mounting hardware for installation onto AMD platforms, another one for Intel platforms, and also a box of common parts needed for installation. Now both of these mounting boxes include mounting bars and plastic spacers, with the Intel box additionally containing a back plate, thumb screws, and lastly bolts that are exclusively for use for the LGA 2011 platform, and also the AMD box additionally contains screws. No back plate is in sight as not sure expected expect you to have kept the one that came over your motherboard, however it is made clear in the Aimly installation manual that if you don't have a backplate you can contact Noctua and I'm guessing that you can request a backplate free of charge if you don't have one. Inside the common parts box we find a syringe of Noctua's own thermal compound, two low noise adapters or LNA adapters as Noctua call them. For short these are intended to bring down the maximum RPM of the fans from 1500 to 1200 for even quieter operation if preferred at the expense of slightly warmer CPU temperatures. Also included is a 4 pin PWM wire cable, a metal Noctua case badge, no shitty decal here, a solid metal screwdriver and two clips for insulation of the second 140 by 150 millimeter fan included in the box. In addition to all these accessories you do also get of course the massive NHD15 aluminium cooler in the main box with one 140 by 150 millimeter fan already attached to the unit with another one in separate packaging beside it. Now the cooler and everything inside is packaged exceptionally well with about an inch and a half of soft foam around the full inside of the box. Onto the cooler itself, the cooler's design is a very large dual tower cooler with two 140 by 150 millimeter fans for on these later. Now the total dimensions of the unit are 165 by 150 by 161 millimeters with both fans being attached, with them figures being height, width and depth. Now the overall weight of the cooler is a whopping 1.321 kilograms with the two fans attached, so it's definitely not light and probably not a cooler you want to transport a PC with when installed in a case, especially if the motherboard is installed vertically. Now the two towers feature many aluminium fins with six pure copper heat pipes passing very evenly through them. On each side of the lower section of the cooler it features recessed lower fins and therefore provides excellent RAM clearance for even the largest of RAM. And even if your RAM is quite tall you can simply attach the outer fan higher up thanks to the way the fans mount with the metal clips. Again more on these later. Now for aesthetics the cooler has been fully nickel plated and it's nice to see such a nice looking and built cooler in general. Build quality is excellent and you can really tell you're getting a quality product from Noctua and at the attention to detail and research that the designers over at Noctua have put into the cooler. Just for a quick comparison and to let the size of this cooler really stand out uh, here's an Octua cooler next to the incredibly popular Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. There we are, just a little comparison there. Moving on to the included fans and their specs and design, Noctua include two of their own 140mm NF-A15 fans. Now covering the specs first, the dimensions of these fans are 140 by 150 millimeters and are the standard 25mm thickness. They overall are quite odd looking fans simply because of their non-square shape and the fact they have 120mm mounting holes as well. However, these have been designed especially to fit onto this cooler and also many other of Noctua's coolers. You can really tell Noctua have spent a lot of time and effort into making these fans. For example, they feature dark brown anti-vibration pads on both sides of the fans. They feature a stepped inlet design, inner surface microstructures. They also do include Noctua's own fan bearing, the SSO2, 
They also have a totally custom designed PWM IC and finally have flow acceleration channels at the outer ends of the blades to promote airflow. Overall, uh, yeah, all, all of these technologies and design choices are to make the fans, uh, you know, have more airflow and to create higher static pressure by not really contributing to more acoustic noise or vibrations. Now, as for other technical specifications, they run at maximum of 1,500 RPM. It can be slowed to 1,200 RPM, as mentioned a few moments ago, with the minimum rotation speed being 300 RPM. Now, the connector type is a four-pin PWM connector and are rated at 19.2 decibels maximum or 13.8 decibels with the LNA adapters attached. Moving on to the installation of the cooler, overall it was a pleasant one and this is mainly due to the fact that you know you do get a metal backplate on the Intel platform and that yeah you do get that custom screwdriver needed for insulation in the box. And that to be honest you only do need to screw in two single screws. Now insulation starts with removing your old cooler and placing the included backplate under your board and through the CPU socket holes. Now once you've done this you want to place the plastic spacers onto the bolts of the backplate then add the mounting bars after deciding which orientation you want the cooler to be facing. Once you've done this, you can fix the bars to the board with the four thumb screws, and next you want to add a, a, yeah, a small amount of thermal paste to the CPU. Now, do you ever recommend a small P? Well, really, the line, rice, or even the spread method will do just fine. The last step for installation is to grab the included screwdriver and to screw down both the screws that are fixed to the cooler onto the mounting apparatus you've just set up on your motherboard. Now be sure to screw down the screws evenly and not to screw them down really tight, nor to break a sweat installing the cooler. Now as for mounting the fans, they simply clip onto the cooler, as I've shown you in the video, and if you have tall ramp, you can simply clip on the outer fan a little higher up. So once you've installed both fans, be sure to use the included PWM wire cable to connect both fans, then connect the one 4-pin connector into your motherboard's CPU fan connector. Finally, onto performance, testing this cooler on my i7 4790K at stock speeds with the automatic 4.4GHz turbo boost enabled, this cooler was able to keep my chip at a cool running 66 degrees. This was, of course, while running my usual benchmark of rendering out the quite intensive 2016 How to Build a Gaming PC guide in Adobe Premiere CS6. Now, if you guys look at the graphs, this should as outperform all the other coolers I've ever tested, and was by far quite impressive when you compare the noise of the other coolers to this one while under load. Now, this cooler was very, very quiet indeed and should as live up to its hype as such. Anyhow, more on the noise levels in the outro, and yeah, without further ado, let's kind of roll the outro and conclude on the Noctua NH-D15. So guys, there were the temperatures, and uh, yeah, just kind of my review of the NHD15. I'm very, very impressed with the cooler, and I must say, for the price, it does come in at a premium, but I think you are getting, you are definitely getting, you know, a, a really premium solution here, you know, for the price you are paying. Uh, you know, just for example, you do get this absolutely solid screwdriver. It's kind of custom made for installing um, them two screws, and... Um, you know, you do get the incredibly high in thermal paste, the NTH1. This is really, this really is on par with that MX4 compound from Arctic, which I uh, really, really do endorse. It is some, some really good thermal paste. And um, yeah, also with this cooler being incredibly quiet, you do also get these low noise adapters. Now I've not put these on, the fans, yet. Um, well, I say, yeah, I probably never will because it's incredibly quiet. But if you are, you know, um, let's say if you are, a really really you know silent freak and you you literally want to be gaming and hearing literally nothing i mean fair enough your gpu is probably gonna then become the loudest thing in your machine or even your your, your hard drives a good old spinning roster um yeah you might want to use these adapters and they do bring down the maximum speed um the the rpm the rpm of these fans are lowest that can go is 300 so they're very very quiet when idling you know like my computer is now it's silent I, I can actually hear the hard drives in a machine and also the cars on kind of the, the main road outside. So, uh, yeah, very, very impressed. You guys seen the temperature, 66 degrees. It is the quietest CPU cooler I've tested and it is the best performing. That must really scream out at you and, um, yeah, must really, really tell you that that is why this cooler does cost a lot of money. It's definitely a premium solution and therefore I would definitely recommend it. Definitely. Uh, I tend to recommend a lot of products that I review, but, uh, but um, a lot of them are just fantastic. And this one really, really has 
uh, blown away my expectations for sure. And this is going to stay on my test rig uh, just as soon as I don't get no more CPU coolers for review. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you guys want to buy this Noctua NHD15 cooler, the monster of a cooler, you can get it on Amazon. I will provide, as always, Amazon US and UK links. And uh, yeah, that's kind of about it, guys. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. Ooh, and also, if you guys that um, uh, might have missed the uh, giveaway video, I, I am giving away three um, air coolers, um, you know, three CPU coolers. Um, and yeah, that link will also be in the description. Or, you, know, you can kind of find the original video. It was kind of like two videos ago. But yeah, giving away three CPU calls to celebrate me getting to 15k subscribers. There we are. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next one. Goodbye.